For those who don't know, this is referred to as a combine. It's used for all sorts of different crops, whether it's uh, corn, soybeans, wheat, barley, canola. Uh, they're used all over the world. This is, has a grain header on it right now. That's what this is referred to as. Or a corn header would have uh, points going out that would travel down through the, uh, the corn rows and stripping the corn cobs off. But this grain head, it, it'd be used for corn, uh, I mean, for soybeans and wheat and barley. So that's what we have right here. It's 25 feet wide. It's got a sickle knife on it. So it just goes back and forth really fast. And that's what, that's what cuts the straw off, feeds it into the auger. The auger feeds it into the combine. And you notice there's all those tubes that are are down. Those are we don't, this isn't just a reel, uh, a traditional reel. It's an air reel as well. So each through those fingers, there's high high uh, pressure air blowing the crop in. Uh, it's not so much for a, a grain crop as for soybeans. Uh, I find it really helps in soybeans to help move the, the beans and you get less header loss with it. Inside the combine there's a, a rotor which travels approximately from here back probably about a good three, three and a half meters. Um, it's a large drum with, with rasp bars on it. They'll have uh, almost uh, like a bunch of knuckles and as, as the grain goes through, it separates it. The grain will drop down through grates into an auger and takes it back to sieves. And the sieves are constantly moving. And that's another separation area. You've got wind blowing through. It'll blow the, any of the straw out, out of the back, any of the light straw that fell down through the grates. The heavier straw, where you see the, the wind rows here, it carries right out through the back comes right out to the out back. If we want to keep it for straw, we'll put it in windrows. If we want to get rid of it, there's a chopper inside, you can chop it, and then spreaders that go in the back and it just spreads it out wide and it just disappears. It'll break down and, and contribute to, as a bit of a fertilizer. It's four wheel drive, you can see in the back here, conditions that we have today in the summer. You don't need the four-wheel drive, but you get into the fall, into a wet year. You know, corn can go into November and December. You're glad that you have four-wheel drive, or you could be stuck. The engine is in the back, up top here. This, this, uh, this particular combine, I believe, is around 325, 330 horsepower. Uh, obviously, diesel. This is the... The new generation of, of engines now, it has the DEF with it. The exhaust coming out of this tractor, or out of this combine, the air is cleaner than the air going into it. The auger here, we've seen uh, for unloading into the, into, the, uh, into the trucks. The combine holds probably about seven tons and we'll unload that in, in less than a minute. So doesn't take long to unload. Everything that's going on in the combine is right here. My yields, my moistures, everything that the combine's doing. I can even, uh, even have cameras on the combine. So this one here is on the end of the auger when uh, we were unloading so I can see inside the truck to make sure it's not going over the other side. This is a one at the back so I can see what's behind me and when I'm hooking up to a trailer. And this is actually inside the grain bin. And uh, once it's full, the, the machine tells me it's full, I have a camera there because I can still go a, a distance afterwards. So this just allows me to see exactly how much I have inside the, the grain bin because it's up behind me here and I can't see it. So this handle, I have all the controls of forward and back as I push it forward. The farther forward I push it, the faster I'll go. I can control my auger in and out for unloading. I can control my header up and down from here. I can control it sideways as well for going through hills or through or over hills and, and uh, through ditches and things just to be able to follow the contour better. 
over here I can control the speed of the rotor, which the uh, different crops you want the rotor to go at a different speed. Uh, corn would be at a slower speed because uh, you just want to kind of roll the corn off the cob and, and you don't want to damage it. With wheat, uh, you tend to run it a little bit faster. It's a smaller grain that can handle getting beat up a little bit more. Air conditioning, obviously you're inside a, a, a glass box and on a hot summer day it can get awful warm in here. So The uh, hopper at the back, um, it folds out for in the field, but for when I go on the road, that whole, that big top that you can see that the grain goes into all collapses down and folds flat for going down the road so I'm not hitting any telephone wires or anything as I'm, as I'm traveling along. And of course I have to have a stereo because I need my, my talk radio and, and my classic rock. So This is probably one of the best wheat crops I've ever combined. But given that, it's, you can look out and see it's actually gone down in places. And uh, the year we've had this year, it's been so growthy. Uh, and being a heavy yield and some of the heavy rains that we've had, it's caused some lodging in, in the wheat, which makes it a little more difficult to combine when it's, when it's flat like this. But uh, anyways, we'll give it a go. Feel that in the seat. <laughs> yeah, so as you see just right here, and this this actually used to be a this is a, a neighbor's farm that we rent now, and this area of the field was a pasture for cattle for as long as I can remember. And so the fertility in here is really, really high. Uh, it's probably just year after year of manure and manure, so uh, when you get that high fertility you'll get, that the, uh, you'll get bigger yields, but again, you might have an issue of, of lodging, and that's what we have this year, just because it's been that kind of a year. I'm still trying to calibrate the, uh, the yield monitor. Now, it's telling me that this field is doing 150 bushel. Now it's good, but I don't think it's that good. So uh, we'll, um, I just need to fine tune it a little bit. But my neighbor who had the field right across the road, he gave me a call yesterday when he finished and it averaged about 120 bushel. So, you know, this, this could be in that, in that same range. So uh, I hope it is. Certainly I think we're, we're 100 bushel plus on this field. So this is soft red winter wheat. We plant it in, uh, in the fall, usually in uh, late September, early October. It'll grow up and then it winters over. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't get killed by the frost or anything. And once spring comes, uh, it just starts to grow again. And uh, normally we harvest it uh, to the middle to the end of July and that's where we are right now so uh, straw is a little tough but uh, we're getting through it and I can tell even from just uh, half an hour ago that I'm able to make better ground speed. The straw when I started was so tough I don't think the old combine would have handled it. I think I would have plugged the combine so I'm glad we got this new one. Our old one was about 13 years old uh, so it, it was a good combine, but it was starting to give us some issues. And I would say a combine like this would, would list at probably with headers and everything over $400,000. Wow. Uh, so. How long does it take to get your payback out of that? Um, I'd like to think in five years. If commodity prices stay high, it'll pay for itself a lot quicker. So I'm windrowing all this, this wheat here. We'll be coming in and baling it up because we also have a, we also have a dairy farm. We milk 200, anywhere from 250 to 270 cows, just depending on the time of year, and uh, we use a fair bit of straw. So. 
the, the chaff and straw get go out the back, and that's what creates the windrow, which will bale up for for uh, straw for the farm for bedding cows, and we also put a little bit into the feed. Lucky on our farm, we have a lot of people come, a lot of international tours, and we get uh, into a lot of discussions with dairy farmers from all over the world. And, and we really are the envy of the world 